Good evening, this is Woodblock Printmaker David Bull, back with the next episode showing the process of printing on one of our new Shin Hanga reproductions, the image of Matsushima created by designer Tsuchiya Koitsu. When we left off in the previous episode, our young printer Aimi-san had done just the first two impressions on the paper, the black, and then she did the sky. And today we'll watch her progress from number three up to about number 14, I think it is. That won't be enough to get us to the end, as this is a very complicated design, but it should be interesting to watch how the print builds color by color. There are two basic parts to each one of the color impressions you're about to see. First, Aimi-san rubs the pigment paste mixture over the surface of the block. Then she puts the paper in place and then takes the actual impression using our baron. This is our rubbing tool. She repeats it, of course, for each sheet in her stack. She's got about 60 in there, but we'll just watch one of each, of course. After taking each impression, she slips the paper into a plastic sheet. The idea is to preserve the moisture. We want to keep the moisture level exactly the same from the beginning of the process right to the end of the process. Anyway, after I get the sequence laid out in my uh, software here, I'll do a bit of voiceovers, you know, bringing up a point by point, things that you might find interesting. Let's get started. Paste, water, and pigment. So those are the three components to every impression that she's going to take here today. This is the first impression on the C part, and it's going to be followed by a lot more. It'll be a lot deeper than this by the time she's finished. This one is going to be a gradation, the color deepening from the bottom up to the top. She's moistened the block in the area where the color is going to fade out. The pigment then goes just at one end of the brush. That's the right hand side from her point of view. A dab of paste at the other end of the brush. And now as she rubs, the pigment creeps bit by bit by bit from the right over to the left. As she starts to rub here, she found that the baron wasn't sliding quite smoothly enough, so she just put a squirt of camellia oil on top of it there. Smooth it out, and now the baron will be able to put power in, but without tearing the back of the paper. An important thing about these gradation rubbings is that her pressure goes smoothly left to right. It doesn't press hard on the deep color and lightly on the light color. The gradation happens in the brush, not in the rubbing tool. As you might have perhaps noticed, she's choosing different brushes, different sizes of brushes, depending on the size of the area to be printed. This is about as small as it gets on this print, and she's chosen a very small brush to suit it. The Baron, though, stays the same size. It's about, I think, 13 centimeters in diameter, and we use the same one for pretty much all of our work. It's much easier to control this way. Hmm. 
Okay, time to give one of these blocks a bath. This is the block she'll be using for her work tomorrow morning. And it's, these are very, very old blocks, and they've dried out, and this one has shrunk too much and can't be printed. By leaving it in water overnight, it'll swell up enough that hopefully the registration marks just might match tomorrow morning. This is now the next morning, and she's taking it out for a quick inspection. At this point, of course, she can't tell how much it's expanded. As it turned out, it came out just about exactly right, and she didn't have to do much shimming to be able to do this color. Now, what's going on here? What's this piece of plastic? Well, it turns out that the roof of that temple on the island, she wants to print a bit of a lighter color than the rest of the gray below it. So she's masking it off. You can see that area hasn't got any color here. She'll print this part first with a slightly deeper color. And now it's time to print the temple roof. She's prepared another mask to block off the bottom part of the block. I guess she's probably prepared a bit of a lighter tone for this part. Not a very dramatic difference in the two areas, but this is what she wants. It'll look very, very nice when it's done. This is the reverse side of that same piece of wood, the one that went into the bath overnight. Uh, of course, all the areas on the same piece of wood have expanded at the same distance, so uh, this is her chance to get them all done while it's in that good condition. Here we go with another gradation. This will bring a deeper tone from the bottom of the sea, but ending just before it gets to the horizon, so leaving the water looking quite light in the distance. There we go. She's putting the pigment at the right-hand side of the brush. A bit more water, she thinks, is necessary there. And now she's spreading it out, and the pigment is creeping, 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 bit by bit, from right to left. When she takes the paper off her, this might look a bit strange to you. She's made no attempt to go right to the bottom of the paper here. She's focusing on the horizon area. So the bottom is still untouched and looks a bit strange. This will be covered later on by another deeper gradation, more than one actually, coming up from the bottom again later. I said before that our barons were all the same, but uh, that was a bit misleading. But they're pretty much all the same size, about 13 centimeters. But she's got a whole selection of different ones in different strengths. That last one with the deep sea, she used a very strong baron that will print deep, wide colors. This one is much lighter because the area she's printing is a smaller surface area.
If you watch some of our previous videos, the one about the Kamigamo Shrine, the block set we got from the Doi Hanga Company, you'll know that we had to replace the registration marks on that block, pretty much on all of them. This one, we only had to do it with one corner. You can see here, there's a fresh piece of wood we've carved and inserted. This particular corner had just been chewed up too much to work successfully with. We'll try a new camera angle here, just looking straight down from the ceiling. And in fact, I'll just, I'll just let this one run completely, start to finish, with no comment. You can watch as she pulls the whole thing. So it's coming along very well, I think. She did quite a lot of preparation before starting, you know, testing all the blocks and mixing colors, etc. So her work is now progressing really quite smoothly. In the next episode, we'll get to the final color, and then we'll have a chat with her to find out how the whole process went from her point of view. That should come pretty soon, as she's really intent on getting this done as fast as she can in order to ensure that the paper doesn't get moldy. To close off this little episode, let's head outside again for a couple of minutes. You know, in strong contrast to the noisy street scene we saw at the end of the previous episode, you know, I recorded with those mics in my ears again, this one will be very peaceful. I took the camera over to Sensoji this morning at about 5.30 to try and capture some of the early morning ambience there. There's nothing exciting at all, just a few quiet scenes taken around the temple environs. Ending with the six o'clock bell, what they call struck by Toki no Kane, the temple bell rung by one of the priests at exactly six o'clock every morning. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Pretty soon, I think.